Hi everybody, Jo here. How are you doing? Fancy little catch up. Today I thought we'd have a play with our pan pastels. Now I know a lot of you have been buying pan pastels, which is brilliant, and as you know, I love using them. Well, today I thought we'd have a play with them on our gel press. This is the design I've come up with. We're going to use a stencil for the background, a couple of colours of pan pastel, and then we're going to stamp. And if you notice, we've got one of our new lovely forest hairs on there and one of our lovely new sentiments. So what we'll do, we'll get started. I'll explain what I'm using as I'm going because there's a few stages to this. So the gel press, do check out um, the Living New website. We've got some lovely new shapes of gel press. I'm going to be using the five by seven today just because it shows this technique very well. Now I've got my gel press on my acrylic block and that's just so I can move it and also it's mindful when I put it down it won't pick up any other surface from underneath because obviously remember your gel press, your mono printing plate has got a really good memory, far better than me I have to say. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using our pan pastels. Now I've just gone for three colours that I fancied using and they are Dairy Light Yellow, Turquoise and I think this is Red Oh, magenta shade. So that's your magenta with your black added. So that's your magenta shade. Any three colours. You could do this with one colour if you wanted. I just thought it would show nicely with three colours. My stencil is the pod stencil. Again, you choose which stencil. And what we're going to do is I wanted an area because I want this background, but I wanted an area that I could stamp it into. So I'm going to use one of my circular masks, the larger one, and I'm just gonna pop that on before we start. And there's almost a suction with that. It's like magic, look, it sticks well. And then I'm gonna put my, my stencil on top. And again, that sort of sticks to your gel press look. It's really good, everything just sticks to it. Now I've got a couple of makeup sponges. I'm not using anything, any applicators for this. I've just gone for some, just some sponges and I'm going to sponge my pastel onto my gel press. And this, I just want to mix the colours on the actual pods. On the finished one, if you look, I almost want some yellow at the top and then to just go, just wanted to mix a few colours up. And I've left this area in the middle. I'm purposely not going to put too much colour there. Now you don't need to obviously go over where the round mask is but sometimes it's difficult remembering actually where the mask is so I tend to just, especially if you like me and you're talking, how often do you do that and forget sort of where you're up to or what you're doing? Now I tend to put my pastels next to me just in the order that I'm going to use them. So that's my yellow. So I'm going to come in with my blue now. And I'm dabbing, I'm actually using a dabbing motion to pick the pastel up because obviously they are a powder, remember? And I find if you sort of rub with your sponge, you'll get more powder and, and you don't want that. It's just a bit of a waste. So a dabbing motion will pick up enough of the colour for you. And again, I'm just dabbing the colour on. Making sure I dab in the right one. We've missed any, I think, that one, but that's over the mask. So I think that's it. So I'm going to go for magenta now. Look at these, I've used all different colours on these. What we like us crafters. That's a nice deep colour at the base. Really shows this stencil well. And I think we're just getting a hint of that. And again, you take your time at home. I'm just being mindful of, of thinking of time for you watching. Do we need a little bit on there? Do you think that's catching it? Right, I think we've got them all. I'll pop the pastels to one side and then if I lift the stencil off. Now, my stencil I will just clean with um, water on a cloth. No need to worry for that. 
But what we do need is the pastel now is stuck to the gel press, so we need something to lift it off. And for that, we're going to use paint. So I've got some acrylic paint and I'm going to use, I've got a Billy Brayer that I especially, this is brother of Billy, and this one I especially use for my, um, my gel press uh, with paint. So I have one for ink and one for paint. And all I'm going to do is put some paint on here. Now you don't need a lot for this technique. It's one of those things, it's sort of trial and error. You'll put the paint on and you'll discover if you put too much on or not enough. So it's one of those techniques. You'll do it a few times and discover. Take some off, I think I've got. And again, if I wanted my background a different colour, I could actually, I didn't have to use white. I'm going to take a little bit off because I think I've got a bit too much on there. Right, now I'm going to lift this off and then I'm going to get my piece of card and my piece of card is five by seven inches the same as my gel press now I'm going to turn my gel press over just so I can make sure I'm just sort of in the right place on my card just says having to trim it down there we go how many times I can tell you I've done this and not taken my circle mask off Oh, it wasn't quite square, was it? Oh, it's nearly enough. I'm just checking you can still see. And then give it a good rub. And you never know what you're going to get with this. So we shall see. But whatever we get, I'll show you. Right, let's lift. Oh, there we go. Look at that got to be honest i think this is beautiful and you don't need to seal this using the pastels this way they don't need to be sealed now we might just have enough on there so i'm actually going to put the paint over the middle bit this time because obviously you can stamp on top of acrylic paint so let's add some now this ghost print we may not get much but sometimes these are the nice ones the starter ones I mean it's your free one so let's see another piece of card no I'm gonna have to do it this way it's the way I like to do it so just go with what you like now like I say we may not get much this time but this is my bonus one I have a box full of what I call my bonus my freebies my two for ones and then those days, you know, when you don't know what to do and you're a bit fed up and you don't know, we almost sometimes think we have so much craft stuff, we don't know where to start. I just find one of these bonus backgrounds and have a play. Oh, look. So you have got something there, look. Now, I'm thinking if you designed, a, dare I say, the, the C, the Christmas word, how nice would it be to do a batch lot of these, making your backgrounds ready? I can almost see a print in here. Now, you could probably get a third one, but I won't. Now, I know you're going to ask me about cleaning your gel press. So I'm just going to put that to one side. Now, I have done some research on gel press themselves who actually manufacture these. And they reckon the best way to get off the pastel is to use either baby oil or a little bit of vegetable oil. Now, don't worry. Oh, I've got mine on a piece of um, cotton wool. And I think I should have had some lint-free cloth. So just ignore that. But what happens is the oil will recondition your, um, your gel press. And then just use, as I say, ignore the fact I've got cotton wool. I think I should have used um, a face wipe. But... Um, the baby oil will condition your gel press and like I say I've researched it with them and they say the baby oil is fine reconditions your gel press so you don't have to worry about that if you're really worried you can wash it in warm soapy water but to be honest there's no need because that can dry it out so just a little bit of, of oil like I say maybe don't use cotton wool like I did maybe a cotton pad might be better Note to self, I think. 
but there we go it's cleaned up nicely and this is just a damp cloth just water on a cloth and that's cleaned up lovely and it will not harm your gel press at all And I would recommend you don't need to dry it, just leave it to air dry. And then I shall be popping that back in the in uh, my little container. Now, when it comes to our print, I'm going to put my brayer to one side. Better clean up as I'm going. And let's just clean up this paint that I've got here. Otherwise, you know what will happen? I'll be putting my hand in it. And the paint on your, your um, circular mask will again like this look. It'll just wash off. It's not a problem. We're not doing anything that's going to damage any of your equipment. What we will do, though, is stamp this design up. Now, I have to say, it's like in here, you could create any scene, couldn't you? I mean, even if you just wanted to put some sentiments, one of our gorgeous sentiments in there, don't need to do a lot to that but I wanted an excuse really to use one of the new forest hairs so I'm going to stamp him first in black I don't know why I call him a he isn't it funny I've not got as far as naming them all well apart from Pippin obviously but he was already named wasn't he so let's place him there and again, he's a silhouette. You're using your um, your nocturne, and just give it time to soak into the card. And I'm just using some copy of paper here, just because for me, having some copy of paper to stamp uh, to stamp on, it just helps me. Especially when I'm sat down, I'm not very good um, stamping when I'm sat down. I think it's because I'm a bit little. Now, I'm just going to blot him just because it's a slower drying ink and it's a good practice to get into if you can blot him. Now, what we'll do is we'll bring the, um, the landscape masks in and we'll go for... There's a couple I tend to use a lot. I love the mountainous ones, but I don't think we want mountains for this. And when I went for the scenery here, I was looking at my colours of my ink pads and in my element sinks, I've got mermaid and I thought that would blend nicely with my turquoise, pick out the turquoise in the pan pastels. But what I will say is these ink pads are very, very juicy. They um, actually, the colour in them, the pigment is well off the scale. So we'll get rid of this for now. And then what I'm going to do is whenever I put some ink on my brush, I always brush it off on my mat because, as I say, it's so heavy in pigment. Now, I'm just going to work in this area as it is. Um, you could use the outer bit of the mask if you wanted to make sure you don't get any on the background. But I'm just going to I'm just going to go for it. And I'm just going to add a little bit first. Just under. Now, again, I'm coming on my mask first. Just, just to ground him. And we want it darker in the foreground. And I'm not going to put any more ink on because hopefully we'll be going lighter. So again, you're going to help with your perspective as it goes lighter in the distance. We're just going to build up a bit of a scene. Right, let's take a bit more off. I've still got a bit too much colour on there. And I think we'll stick with this shape for this one. Nice and light. And then we'll bring in our next one. And with these, don't just put it down. Don't be in a rush. Let's turn it round. Let's have a look how... Oh, that looks nice, right? That did just happen to plunk it down, didn't it? So I'm being mindful not to go over the edges. Now, this is in the distance, so nice light touch. I want it lighter. That's nice. Should we just have one more over this side? I don't want it to be the same shape, do I? There we go, and I'm just going to do this very lightly. I don't know why my voice goes lightly when I do. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'll just add some nice light stenciling, yeah. That's enough there. So we've got that perspective. And again, these I'll just wipe after, but you don't want to see me wiping them now. And I'm going to bring the moon, the smallest of the circular masks. And again, I'm going to be mindful. I don't want to go over the area that I've already, so I'm just going to... 
like I say, you could mask it off, but to be honest, I, I don't think there's any need. I think you can, you know where to stop. It's just remembering. There we go. And you've got yourself, as I say, for me, that could be a pretty Christmas sort of design, couldn't it? I mean, really, you don't need to add any more to that. But we will, just because when I was looking in my um, stamp box, I found this lovely set of tree scenes. And I just thought, look at this, if you use the acetate, that size of tree is just perfect. So we'll just stamp a little group of these trees, I'm thinking. Because almost you need something to look at, doesn't he? Let's imagine, maybe there's some birds in those trees. Or again, if I was doing Christmas, I could put some little baubles, couldn't I? Now, where should we have this one? Oh, we'll have this one here. And then maybe just one in the background there. Three. I like the three. I think it works well. We like threes, don't we? Now, we want a little bit of, of shading. You don't need a lot else to this, do you? So for the shading, I'm just going to bring in my pastel, my pastel pencils. And, and for me, I like to add the white. I find it a little bit more forgiving. I'm not very good with my white gel pen. Now, as I say, I know a lot of you are. And this is where you go with what you prefer. So for me, I just find the pastel pencil is a bit more forgiving, for, certainly for me. And I'm just going to add a few highlights on the front where the moon, you'd have a bit of highlight there his ears, his nose. And I just want to make him a bit more shape there so we can see. And as I say, for me, that's just easier. Now I want a little bit of shade. We've got the moon there, so my trees will sort of come this way, won't they? And then they'll be like a tree. And I'm doing it lightly. I don't want, I'm just using my pastel pencils for this. And this one, my second generation just to give the idea and the same with the rabbit there'd be a little bit of shade sort of here and his paw would be there wouldn't it so and I'm just rubbing it the rubbing does two things it seals it because the pastel pencils and also it just tends to make it look more like a shadow and I've got my yellow pencil now you could leave it like that but because I've got yellow here I just wanted to bring a little bit of yellow almost like um the moon just catching, just glinting and being mindful to be above the blue because I don't want it to make green because obviously yellow and blue but I just wanted that hint of the yellow and I'm just going to add a little bit at the base here just to bring a little bit of it, a yellowy hue. Now if I wanted I could just maybe add a little bit to the, the trees And it's just for me to bring the whole design together, make it look lovely and cohesive, which is what we want. We want it to look like we've thought about it. And that's all the pencil I think that I'm going to add. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to take away from my lovely background. Now, the last thing I would do is, the reason I haven't cleaned this up, and I know you're probably shouting at me saying, Joe, you haven't cleaned that up, is because I want to use that. Now again, so I'm just going to tap my fan brush, it's in my water pot. Now, anybody who doesn't like using the, the ink splats, you could stop at this point, you could add some glitter, you could add um, your um, any sort of sparkly sparkle pens, I can't think of the word then. But I'm just going to add some little, I just want to add some little hmm, flicks with my fan brush. Just something I like to do across diagonal. And on the finished piece, if you look, I've actually put it on my backing card as well. But I know some of you don't like to do this, so it's totally up to you. Now, I've stamped the lovely sentiment on my backing card here. And the sentiment is from Heartfelt Verses. And these are lovely. There's four gorgeous sentiments on here. We've got With Love, Just For You, Birthday Wishes and With Love and Sympathy. Now, that's a lovely collection. I'm so pleased that um, Tracy's given us some lovely verses. I'm, I'm hoping if, if we all like them, she might let us have some more. Please, Tracy. 
Now, again, if you wanted, you could add more shade around here, but I just like that. If I bring in a piece of black card to show you. So that's my design for today. I'm hoping you have fun. I'm hoping you explore the gel press with your pan pastels. As I say, they are lovely. They don't need fixing. And here's that extra print I've got. Can't wait to use that. It's always good to have homework, isn't it? So I'm hoping you enjoyed that. Thank you for joining me as always. And I love reading your comments. If you have a go, please um, please share the video. Please like it. And um, if you have a go, please tag me in. I'd love to see how you get on. As I say, just another way to enjoy your fabulous stencils. So take care, everybody. Thanks, as always, for your friendship and support. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.